This is the Volvo V40 Cross Country and it costs about £1,800 more than the equivalent V40 hatchback. And it's been all countryfied, so you've got some body cladding, which is essentially the automotive equivalent of a wax barber jacket. And it's got suspension raised up by 40 millimetres, which is about the same as wearing a nice set of wellies. Car isn't really designed for off-roading though, because only the range topping T5 version has all-wheel drive, and that costs from £34,000, so it's a bit expensive. The entry-level car though starts from just under £24,000, but if you click up there to go to carway.co.uk, you can compare offers and buy a price you're confident in. So, this V40 Cross Country is identical to the V40 Hatchback inside. The car's actually been around for a while now, and it's starting to feel its age here on the inside when you compare it to something that's a bit more modern, like the latest Mini Countryman. But I can't fault the design too much. It's still very kind of simplistic, as you'd expect from a Swedish car. And there's some nice features, such as this floating centre console, which feels very high quality. In fact, the quality of the materials is generally very good. And so is the feel of everything that you touch. I, I like the indicator stalks. I love the way they're just nicely damped. It's all pretty good. Storage here in the front is OK as well. So the door bins are not massive, but they can take a litre bottle of water. You've got some extra storage here behind the floating centre console where you will undoubtedly lose things. I was looking for my mobile phone, but I had actually left it on the seat there. <laughs> There's some cup holders there, some more storage in here, and a huge glove box as well. And that brings us on to the infotainment system. So this is where the car really does show its age. The screen isn't that high res, and the way you operate it is by this dial up here on the centre console. It's a little bit fiddly to use, and the system itself isn't all that intuitive. Now, if you click up there, you can see my full in-depth video review of the infotainment system on this car. Now, another problem with the V40 Cross Country is practicality. So, for starters, the rear doors don't open particularly wide, so larger people are going to struggle, and if you want to mess around with a child seat, that could be a bit of a pain. Just get in. Now, one of the things that's not so great, well, knee room is good, headroom, that's tight. People with six foot will be touching their head on the car's roof. There is something I do like though. What Volvo has done is move these seats in ever so slightly. So when you're sat in the back, you're not staring at the headrest in front of you. You do get a view out of the front, which is really handy if you're going to be carrying children. They're less likely to get car sick because they can see exactly where they're going. Another feature I like is, as well as a fold down armrest, you've got these cup holders there. I think they're brilliant. What's not so brilliant is the fact that the body is quite narrow. So even though the middle seat isn't all that bad, the narrow body means that coming through the back is pretty horrible. Another thing that's not so great is the boot capacity. It's a little bit small for this class of car, and there's a huge load lip to lift stuff over as well. There's not too many clever features in here either. You've got some tethering points, but that's about it. There's no 12 volt socket or anything like that, which is a bit odd for a Volvo. They're normally quite practical. Now, if you want to carry larger items, you can, of course, fold down the seats, but this highlights another issue you'll see that there is this huge ridge there that makes it a bit awkward to push heavy items to the front of the car. Now, for an extra 100 quid, you can buy a false floor for this car, and it does raise up slightly, so you get rid of that ridge and you have a continuously flat floor. But really, that should be standard at this price, Volvo. Come on. Now, if you want more detail on this car's practicality, click up there to watch my detailed practicality video. See how easy it is to fit a child seat, just how much stuff you can fit in the boot, and what it's like with three adults in the back of the car. So, how does the Volvo V40 Cross Country feel when you hit the road? Now, if you're after a smart little crossover that's also fun to drive, this is probably not going to be your car. I mean, the steering, look, they're moving it around in the corner and not much is happening. Look at that. <laughs> it's not particularly responsive. So, yeah, you don't particularly want to hustle it around like you would, say, a mini countryman. But how do you really drive your car? I mean, do you drive it like a crazy motoring journalist trying to evaluate the chassis? Of course you blooming don't, do you? You're just cruising up and down the motorway or driving through town. And in that respect, this Volvo V40 Cross Country is more than good enough. So let's talk about the suspension. Now, it's jacked up 40 millimetres over the normal V40. On the whole, it's, it's more than adequate. Also, it's helped by the fact these seats are super, super comfy. The only thing is that it's no more comfy than the normal V40, so the only reason you'd buy this is because you like the more rugged looks and the fact that you can actually go over a speed hump a little bit quicker because it's higher off the ground. 
You're not going to buy it for its off-road ability because, well, only the range-topping T5 has all-wheel drive. And that brings me on to the engine. So this is the D4, so it's the most powerful diesel. It's two litre. It's got around 190 horsepower. And it, I tell you what, you put your foot down. It flies, it feels sporty, this thing. This one's actually got the automatic gearbox and I've got it in sports mode because in sports mode, it does what you want it to. Responds when you put your foot down. Put it in normal drive and it's like, I don't know, it's like it's taken a load of Valium. It just becomes all super lethargic and unresponsive. So yeah, I'd probably just get the car with a manual gearbox and I'd probably just get the D2 diesel, the entry level, because it's got enough punch. And while this D4 is supposed to do 74 miles per gallon, I'm getting low 40s, which while all right, is way off the manufacturer's claims. Another thing to note is the visibility. So Volvos, they're supposed to be super safe, yet this huge pillar creates a blind spot and out the back window visibility is poor and there's huge rear pillars as well which create other big blind spots. Anyway, if you want to see for yourself, click up there to join me for a 360 degree passenger ride video. There are some other annoying things about the V40 cross country. Here's five. There's an annoying little button here that when you press it doesn't actually do anything. The location of the cup holders means that if you put a bottle in there, they get in the way of the handbrake and the gear lever. Duh. Oh dear. Oh, look at these tiny little numerical buttons. They're going to be nice and easy to press when you're driving along. The rear windows only open this far. So yeah, if you want to put your arm out, it's very comfortable. The extra body cladding of the cross country sticks out a little bit further. So when you get out, you sometimes want the back of your trousers on it and then they get a little bit dirty. Thanks, Volvo. However, this Volvo has plenty of cool features which help make up for all this. When you're doing an emergency stop, the brake lights shine extra brightly to warn other drivers. You get a handy little clip for your parking ticket. There's a pedestrian airbag under there. It pops out the bonnet if you hit somebody, helps protect their head. When you turn the steering wheel, the headlamps rotate through up to 15 degrees to help illuminate round a corner. You can get a special app for your mobile phone so you can control things remotely, such as the locks, the climate control, or the headlamps. Now, if you click up there, you can go to carwire.co.uk for more information and to save an average of £4,000 on a new Volvo V40 Cross Country. So then, what's my verdict on this car? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should consider the V40 Cross Country. You know, it is a nice car, but its rivals are more practical. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, share it, and subscribe to our channel. And click on the video windows to watch some more of our excellent videos.